Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a lovely titanium 2019 model year 300-piece edition from Ulysse Nardin. This is the Diver X Antarctic, a watch inspired by the Vendée Globe sailing race, as well as the aesthetic input of wildlife photographer and nature photographer Sebastian Copeland. This takes the Diver X platform, where no Diver X has been before, to the southernmost point, the coordinates of which you can see on the reverse side. So in titanium, this watch is 44 millimeters in diameter. It's 15.1 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip. It's 50.2 millimeters across the wrist. We're going to pop open the strap because the watch wears beautifully on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see the strap is asymmetrical, conforming to the case and integrated on one side. It features a double articulated combination of rubber and titanium hinge on the opposite side. So the ergonomics are superb in spite of the fact that this is a 44 millimeter watch. Now you can see that the lugs are short enough and curved enough, take a look, they are curved, that this will fit nicely on my 16 centimeter wrist and I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. You would have no trouble there. You see over the top, pull that sleeve back so you can see it better down the barrel right here and I've got clearance on both sides. It's also flatter than I would have expected, though with the cantilevered bezel, it will hang up the tightest of dress sleeves. The strap is high grade, vulcanized rubber, wonderfully supple, evacuated on the bottom to make it more flexible and also to allow the wrist to breathe. You can see it's a brand new UN factory strap in white. We have that lovely grade five titanium articulated hinge with a combination of polish and satination and the case and bezel are grade five titanium. That's the good stuff, more scratch resistant than steel, hypoallergenic, and also lighter than steel. Individual numbering, this is a nod to UN's history as a maker of marine chronometers, which were almost always numbered using flank-mounted number plates held in place by screws. You can see that the bezel features a combination of satin finish and bright polish, and then the case features a combination of satin finish on the lug hoods and media blasting on the flank. There's also a fluting along the flanks of the lugs that continues through the mid case. There's a lot to see and it's a fascinating design. We have polymer crown guards that can be replaced if gouged, and we have a crown that is alternately polished, satinated, media blasted, and then lacquered with this lovely light blue. The bezel is one of the best sounding and feeling dive bezels I've ever encountered. Countered. Let's have a listen. With these rider tabs, it's easy to grip even with wet, sweaty, and gloved hands. It is a 120 click with a super fine and super refined action. You can line up the little zero with the minute hand, and now you have an impromptu zero to 60 minute count up timer. I've always preferred dive bezels to chronograph. Easier to read, cheaper to service. And then we have a polymer inlay. That's what makes the white. Now, taking a quick look in the dark, you can see there is no shortage of luminescence. Uh, one of the quirky features here being the fully loomed zero, and then perhaps a little bit unexpected, we also have a loomed power reserve indicator up at 12 o'clock. Plus note, all three time-telling hands, hours, minutes, and seconds are loomed, so in the dark you know that your dive watch is running. All this is 300 meters water resistant with a screw-down crown. You can see the dial features a combination of a rough-grained chiseled pattern, and then beautiful vertical satination on the X itself. Uh, they say that Sebastian Copeland had his input here, but perhaps also Professor Charles Xavier. Now, much like the vintage Ulysse Norden marine chronometers, we have a seconds hand down at six o'clock and a power reserve indicator up at 12, both are countersunk. And the power reserve on this watch, automatic winding by a Paul-based winding system. It is 60 hours. We have applied rhodium-plated hour indices, so no printed features here, although we have a few well chosen printed features in the sub-registers. Now, the watch includes a hacking seconds function, which should be no surprise on a modern watch. Stop the seconds hand, synchronize to a reference time. What is a surprise is that the quick set for the date actually works in both directions, which is a nice refinement rarely seen. And then we also have the display 
of the route of the Vendée global sailing race. We have the southernmost point, quite literally the South Pole, and underneath it we have a UN caliber 118. That's how you read a UN reference number. It always starts with the movement number. 118 is surprisingly sophisticated, though distantly Lemania based It's now made entirely in-house by UN, and they've extensively re-engineered it. So, it is automatic winding, bi-directional, with a pole-based magic lever-style winding system, a 60-hour power reserve, hacking seconds, the bi-directional quick set, the power reserve indicator, a 4 hertz beat rate. It has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring made by UN and its subsidiary Sigatech. UN can make it own silicon. It also features a silicon escapement that features a synthetic diamond coating on silicon. It operates completely unlubricated, and yes, this is also of their own through Sigatech. A full silicon, completely unlubricated escapement for long levels of high performance in between servicing. And while the watch is not, strictly speaking, a certified chronometer it is adjusted in-house to the ISO 3159 standards, and those are the standards used to govern the Swiss COSC. This 50 joule movement has both a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance for shock tolerance. This watch is simply chock a block with cool features. Forget the Seamaster, forget the Submariner and the Sea Dweller. Think outside the box. Go with the now independent Ulysse Norden and this spectacular UN Diver X Antarctic. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for pricing.